For another example of how converting between the polar form and the component form of vectors can be useful, I'd like to talk about the following application problem, which is referred to as static equilibrium. Static equilibrium is a fairly common physics problem that shows up in some freshman and sophomore level physics classes. So static is a word that means not moving, and equilibrium is a situation where everything is sort of balanced out. So uh, an example of static equilibrium would be if you had an object that was, say, dangling between a couple of wires or chains or ropes or something along those lines. Consider a traffic light, for example. Traffic light is usually suspended between two different wires that are holding it in place. Now, the force that gets created within these wires is referred to as a uh, tension. So if we calculate the force exerted by each wire, that force is referred to as a tension. Now in SI units, force usually has units of newtons. However, in imperial units, hashtag Marika, uh, that would have units of pounds. So if we know how much the average traffic light weighs, we can calculate the tension in each of these wires, assuming that we have one more measurement for these wires. And the one additional measurement that we're going to need is going to be the angle that each of these creates with the horizontal. Now, I did a Google search several years ago about how much these weighs and have completely forgotten by now, so let's just call it 120 pounds. Additionally, let's say that the wires create angles of 21 degrees on the right-hand side and 18 degrees on the left-hand side. All of these numbers are kind of arbitrary and you can sort of tailor them however you see fit. Now, the big important key here is that if something is static, Static can be interpreted as not moving. And if something is not moving, it is not accelerating. There we go. If it's not accelerating, that means that the sum of the forces acting on it, acting on it, is equal to the zero vector. That is to say, every force that's acting on it is in an equilibrium. They all balance each other out. Now with that in mind, what I'm going to do is start by drawing a free body diagram. And in this free body diagram, this is where we are going to label the object in question, the traffic light in this case, as a single point in space, representative of the center of mass of that object, and I'm going to make that the initial point for all of the force vectors that are acting on it. So we have a tension pulling us to the right, we have a tension pulling us to the left, and we also have the weight of the object in terms of gravity. And what I'm going to do is label all of these vectors as well as the corresponding angles that we have. So 21 degrees with the horizontal, 18 degrees with the horizontal, for the left vector, I'm simply going to refer to that as vector L to represent to the left, and vector R for the vector to the right. So what I'm going to do is represent each of these vectors in terms of its polar form. And by representing it in terms of its polar form, we'll be able to um, add up the corresponding components. Now for vector L pointing to the left, I'm going to consider the direction left as being the negative horizontal direction and right as being the positive horizontal direction. So the horizontal component for the left vector is going to be the magnitude of L times the cosine of 18 degrees. Because it's pointing to the left, I'm also going to label that as being negative. If you wanted to go with the supplementary angle of 162 degrees, we would neglect this negative sign. To the, oh, sorry, the uh, vertical component, because it's pointing in the upward direction, that'll be magnitude of L times the sine of 18 degrees. For the vector R, we'll do something similar, represented in terms of components instead of its polar form. This will be magnitude of R times the cosine of 21 degrees. 
because it's pointing to the right, that'll have a positive coefficient. And for the vertical component, magnitude of r times the sine of 21 degrees. Because it's pointing in the upward direction, we'll define that as positive as well. And finally, the weight vector, if we were to break it down into its components, it's pointing only in the vertical direction. So the horizontal component will be zero, and the weight will be 120 pounds. Because it's pointing in the downward direction, we will label that as being negative. Now, big important thing that we said earlier is that the sum of the forces acting on this must be the zero vector. So if I take L plus R plus the weight, it should add up to the zero vector, or rather corresponding components should add up to zero. So for the horizontal component, for the horizontal component, we would be saying that the negative magnitude of L times the cosine of 18 degrees plus next horizontal component, magnitude of r times the cosine of 21 degrees plus the weight, which would be zero for the horizontal component, should be equal to zero. Or stated a little more simply, so that they both have positive coefficients, we'll put them on opposite sides of the equation. So magnitude of vector r times cosine of 21 degrees is equal to magnitude of vector l times the cosine of 18 degrees. We're going to do the same thing for the vertical component. So for the vertical component, I'm going to add up all three of the components, set it equal to zero. We have magnitude of L times the sine of 18 degrees. Magnitude of L times the sine of 18 degrees plus magnitude of R times the sine of 21 degrees plus negative 120 so we'll say minus 120 is equal to zero. Or put in a form where everything has a positive coefficient, this will be magnitude of L times the sine of 18 degrees plus magnitude of R times the sine of 21 degrees is equal to 120. What you have at this point would technically be a system of two linear equations with two variables. This can be solved using either substitution or elimination, if you wanted to go elementary algebra with it, or if you've taken linear algebra and would like to set up a matrix or perhaps Kramer's rule, any of those ideas would work out just fine. Because we haven't necessarily had access to linear algebra yet, I am going to use the technique of substitution. So with that in mind, I'm going to take this first equation and solve for the magnitude of r. In solving for the magnitude of r, I divide both sides by the cosine of 21 degrees. So this will be the magnitude of L times the cosine of 18 degrees divided by the cosine of 21 degrees. I'm then going to substitute this into the second equation to get rid of the magnitude of r and leave us with just the magnitude of L. So this will be magnitude of L times the sine of 18 degrees plus magnitude of r times the sine of 21 degrees is equal to 120. Now that expression is going to be exactly what we got back here. So magnitude of L times the cosine of 18 degrees over the cosine of 21 degrees. Now to make this a little bit cleaner, I'm going to make use of a, an identity from trigonometry that says that if we have the sine of 21 degrees and we divide by the cosine of 21 degrees, we can call that the tangent. So this will be magnitude of L times the tangent of 21 degrees times the cosine of 18 degrees. That's equal to 120. We can then factor out the greatest common factor of magnitude of L and divide by what's left. So we're running low on space here, so we're going to do both of those things as one step. So this will be 120 divided by sine of 18 degrees plus tangent of 21 degrees times the cosine of 18 degrees. Now given that this is a real world problem with real world application, I am going to get a real world answer for it and round my final answer in the graphing calculator. 
So with that in mind, check my mode. Make sure that my mode is degrees because that's what we're going to be inputting to the calculator. We have 120 divided by, big set of parentheses for the denominator, sine of 18 degrees, close those parentheses, plus tangent of 21 degrees times cosine of 18 degrees, closing those parentheses each time. Put it together and the tension felt in that rope rounded to the second decimal place would be 178.02 pounds. 178.02 pounds. Now, the closer the ropes are to horizontal, the greater the tension has to be. This is actually something that you can try out yourself with an object like a backpack. Try uh, suspending the backpack, keeping the two straps as horizontal as possible. You'll realize that you have to pull a lot harder the closer it is to horizontal. Now, with this answer for L in mind, we can take this back to the substitution equation. Take what we just got, multiply by the cosine of 18 degrees, and divide by the cosine of 21 degrees to get our other answer. So take what we just got, multiply by the cosine of 18 degrees, divide by the cosine of 21 degrees, and that's the tension felt to the right. So tension felt to the right is going to be approximately 181.35 pounds. So that is an example of static equilibrium. I hope that you found this useful and uh, hope that you can apply it in your physics classes as well.